Good morning, Vietnam. This is Michael J. Migliori, and I am Man on Film. And this is what you should watch for the weekend of March 19th, 2010. This weekend we have a whole heaping load of movies coming out. We have five movies coming out, uh, three of which I'll go into detail about and two of which I'll breeze lightly over. So let the festivities begin. Our first film is called The Bounty Hunter. It's a riveting documentary about everyone's favorite cult icon, Star Wars' bounty hunter, Boba Fett. Hang on. This film isn't about Boba Fett at all. This film stars Gerard Butler and Jennifer Aniston doing romantic comedy things. Oh. And although I love watching Jennifer Aniston do just about anything, it makes me sad to see that she would do a film like this. And what's up with Gerard Butler? He was in one good film. Come on. Somebody has to get a hold of his agent and shake him. Shake him very hard. In any case, uh... Your homework for this weekend is to not only ignore this film, but completely forget it ever existed. Diary of a Wimpy Kid. This film looks cute. That's right, I said it. This film looks adorable. This film looks like the cinematic equivalent of puppies, kittens, rainbows, red balloons, and green clovers put together. And uh, personally, I'm really happy to see that Hollywood is finally taking kids' movies seriously. Uh, back in the day when you had Garfield coming out and all those other pieces of crap, uh, this is a huge change for that. You have movies that actually have some sort of production value and it looks like they actually put some effort and time into it. Films like the Percy Jackson film, the Harry Potter films, the Narnia films, they're all uh, pretty good. Naturally, and then none of them are going to be of huge cinematic importance, I'm sure. Not a, lot, not a lot of edge, not a lot of, you know, social criti criticism or commentary to them. But good films nonetheless. And it's good to see uh, a weekend when a kid's film comes out and actually looks better than the Jennifer Aniston, Gerard Butler romantic comedy that is released in the same week. So, yeah, good film. Repo Men. Jude Law and Forrest Whitaker star as Repo Men, whose job it is to repossess artificial organs from deadbeats who can't pay their bills. That is, of course, until Jude Law becomes a deadbeat and he can't pay his bill, and the tables are turned. Now, there's some debate about the origins of this film, because some of you might know about and remember a film that came out just a few years ago called Repo, a genetic opera, which pretty much was the same exact premise, uh, same exact setting pretty much but the big difference being it was a uh, rock opera and also starred Paris Hilton uh, take a look at that if you get a chance uh, like I said it's pretty much the same thing and I'm fairly certain there's some sort of litigation going on between the two companies uh, who released both of these films but you know who's to say about any of that in any case I love the premise to this film it's uh, so genuinely science fiction. It's futuristically plausible, socially critical, and pretty scary to think about it. In fact, it's so scary. I've had nightmares about people coming chasing after me, trying to get my organs. So uh, this this film has uh, touches me, touches me in a way not many films do. This weekend we also have two independent films coming out in limited release. The first of which is called The Runaways. Kristen Stewart and Dakota Fanning star as female rock versions of Girls Gone Wild. They play rockers Joan Jett and Sherry Curie who has to shock the male chauvinistic world of rock with their brand of leather jacket feminism. This film looks like it has so much girl power that I can just barf. The Runaways. Yeah, run away. Run far, far away. The other indie we have coming out this weekend is The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. This is a Swedish film that's causing a lot of hoo-ha-ha in its native country. It's based off of a series of three books called the Millennium Trilogy. They're crime dramas that pretty much circle around this girl with this dragon tattoo who's a kind of a punk rock hacker girl. If you get a chance, catch this film now before Hollywood ruins it. Oh, that is, I'm sorry, remakes it. 
uh, because they've just auctioned off the rights to it and they are planning on doing so. So if you haven't seen this one or if you haven't seen the other Swedish masterpiece, Let the Right One In, that is currently being ruined, oh, I'm sorry, I mean remade uh, to a film called Let Me In. This is coming out later on this year. So if you like gritty crime drama uh, that's very booky, check this one out. All right, guys, five films to choose from, and I bet you're confused. That's all right, because just as in society and as in life, in order to limit confusion, we must limit the options. So let us begin the process of ridicule and belittling that will lead us to the answer to the question, what should you watch this weekend? All right, first up to the gallows for prompt execution is our idiotic romantic comedy of the week, The Bounty Hunter. Two presumably talented individuals thrust into a film that I wouldn't let the detainees at Guantanamo Bay watch. Yes, definitely a pass. Moving on, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, super cute, even adorable, but this seems like it might be a little bit too much like my middle school experience, so I'm not living that one up again. Well, my choice this weekend is going to be Repo Man. Whether or not they completely rip off Repo the Genetic Opera, which all evidence points to, uh, yeah, they did. I welcome the new film in its non-musical format. At this point, I'm sure you must be thinking, what about our limited release independent films? Well, they are in limited release, so there's no real guarantee you'll be able to find them. But, if you like an assessment, let's start. The Runaways seem a little too pretentiously feminine for me, so I'm definitely going to skip on that one. And The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, as good as I've been hearing about it, it actually doesn't really interest me very much. Not enough for me to sit through sweet, uh, two and a half hours of Swedish. But if you were going to actually go out to see either one of those, I'd go with The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Until next time, this is Michael J. Migliori, your man on film. May the force be with you. Always. <laughs> My name is Boba Fett, and I approve this message. <laughs>